Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. I am Doug and this is Doug Sells. Today, I mean, it's just another thrift haul, but I lived this week like I was a full-time reseller. I had some time off from work. I had like five weeks of vacation built up and I just needed a break from work. So I took off, I took off work. I took off all week, uh, this entire week. And I decided that I am going to live this week like I'm a full-time reseller. For those of you that are new, I am Doug. I am a part-time reseller. I do have a full-time job, but I'm a part-time reseller. I sell on eBay, Instagram, and Poshmark. This is just kind of my channel of showing you what I sell, showing you what I pick, stuff like that, you know? So we're gonna go over the numbers. I'm gonna tell you how many thrift stores I've visited. Maybe not how many I've visited, but uh, maybe I can look that up. Uh, maybe how many thrift stores I've visited, uh, how much money I spent, how much I paid per item this week. I did a couple of new things this week because I did have a lot of time. So uh, I went to a garage sale and I went to an estate sale. I am recording this video on a Thursday night because uh, I'm not going to go thrifting tomorrow, which would be Friday, because I've bought a lot this week and I just haven't had the time to list. So tonight after I make this video and then tomorrow, I'm going to spend all day listing and getting this stuff up. And then Saturday, I have some family stuff I have to do. So I can't go do anything on Saturday, uh, which is disappointing. So technically, I started living as a full-time reseller last Saturday, I guess. <laughs> like last Saturday. So uh, I, I, let's go over the numbers real quick. And then I'm going to show you uh, 10 items that I picked uh, that will bring in some good profit. And, uh, you know, I have one item at the very end. I always do at the very end. That was the, is the biggest, the biggest money getter that I found. And a lot of the stuff that I post is also hopefully educational for you new resellers. You know, maybe you find some things uh, that I'm picking and selling that you maybe go right past when you're at thrift stores or you're at garage sales. I'll show you a few things uh, that maybe uh, we'll catch your eye next time. So let's just go over the numbers real quick. Okay, okay. Since last Saturday, I have visited 10 different thrift stores, one yard sale, and one estate sale. And let's, let me tell you how that went for me. So out of all of that, I spent $275.92 this entire week. Also, if you're a full-time reseller, let me know, is that kind of on par for what you sell per week? I mean, what you spend per week, is that kind of what you spend per week or do you spend more? I'm just curious of what you full-time uh, resellers do. Um, I was able to purchase 60 items for $275.92 and it comes out to be $4.60 per item which is okay with me okay with me absolutely fine with me so those are the numbers and I know I'm gonna talk a lot before I get to these these items that I thrifted so um, I'm sorry if, if you're one of those just likes to get right to the action but I'll just start with uh, so Monday morning I get up and I I, I've decided I'm going to start at the far east of the city and come back this way this week, right? So I go far out east uh, to a Goodwill <laughs> that I used to go to four or five years ago when I was reselling before I quit reselling. And uh, it is no longer there. <laughs> it's no longer a thrift store. It is an empty building and they're uh, renovating it and getting ready to do something else with it. So then I came back and I went to another Goodwill and then I went to this uh, other place uh rehab for what's it called hold on oh okay habitat for humanity which they they basically gut houses and you know builders that renovate houses they donate this stuff to habitat for humanity and they sell it for real cheap and uh every now and then they'll get some clothes in there they have a little section off to the left where they get some clothes and i've found some stuff in there before so i was gonna go check in on that and they were closed <laughs> Not for good. They weren't closed for good. They were just closed on Mondays. The the the, the time that I decided to go out there, it's about a 30 minute drive for me. So I was like, okay, I'm just not gonna go here. Uh, so then I went to uh, then I went to another little thrift store, kind of a pricey thrift store, and I actually found a really good item. It's gonna be in one of the 10 uh, items that I found. All right, Tuesday. Tuesday was my birthday. Happy birthday to me. All right, Tuesday was my birthday, and I, I went down to North Mississippi, which is just across the state line here from Memphis. And I hit a few of their thrift stores that I like to go to. 
one in particular I do really good at. Uh, I spent like $61.12 there. Yeah, and then Wednesday, uh, I went to Salvation Army 25% off day. I was there right when they opened. I got there 15 minutes before they opened, and the line was already about 25 people deep. And so this is like, if you're going to be a full-time reseller, you know, I didn't know, get there 30 or 45 minutes early if you want to be one of the first ones in. So I dealt with that. And then today, which is Thursday, uh, my plan was to get up and go to an estate sale about 15 minutes away from me because in their pictures, they showed some, uh, some vintage t-shirts, you know, from the nineties and eighties and stuff like that. It wasn't a lot of them. It was probably under eight or so, maybe half a dozen, but regardless, I wanted to get there and I wanted to look at those. I want to grab those and see if there was anything that they weren't showing in the pictures. And let me tell you, I'm never able to go to estate sales on Thursday or Friday because I'm always working. I always get to go on Saturday and Sunday. That's when all the good stuff's gone. So I was excited. <laughs> so I get there about 20 minutes early and there's nowhere to park. And I get there and the line's about 30 people deep. Yep. So they even opened the doors early. It started at nine. They opened the doors early. I was in the house by eight. 57 and the t-shirts that I wanted were already gone. <laughs> so man, that was tough. That, that was, that was a hard, was, that was a wake up call right there. Like I, I do not envy you full timers, man. Gosh, you got to get there like early, early just to get the good stuff. You gotta be that first person in. So then I stopped by Goodwill after that. And then I went to the, I went to a yard sale that started at 11 today. And I spent $5 there and that is actually at that yard sale. I bought one item for $5 and that is going to be the biggest profitable item that I found all week. And then I went to the Goodwill bins and I spent $11 and 41 cents there. And I got 10 items for that amount of money because you pay about a pound. So that was pretty good. So that was my experience as a full-time reseller. Like I said, I'm taking tomorrow off so I can stay home and list. And I'm not going to get to go Saturday. So got a family thing to do. So anyway, let's get right to the items. I know that was a lot of talking, but let me show you some of the items I picked. All right, first, this is one of those items that might help new uh, thrifters, new resellers. This is a plain blank Hanes sweatshirt from, you know, I don't know. So this, this particular tag. So it says, let me show you the tag. It says Hanes Classics. I've never seen one that says Classics on the bottom. But I did some research and there are some out there, but I know that that Hanes right there, uh, I believe goes from anywhere from like 86 or 87 to like 1993 or four, something like that. So I think this one's going to be in the early nineties. Anyway, it's just plain blank Hanes. And uh, I looked up some on eBay. I didn't find any exactly like this, but I found one very similar and you should be able to get anywhere between 25 and 35 dollars uh, for something like this okay next this is one of the items i said i went to a little thrift store and it's kind of expensive an expensive thrift store and um actually just now just now when i picked this up i realized something first of all this is a, a pataloha uh, patagonia has a a brand for Hawaiian shirts. It's called Pataloha. And they're very profitable if you can find them. Always pick them up. They're very profitable. The prices are all over the place. I've seen some go for over $200. and But normal price is going to be between $50 and $70, I believe. But what I found just now is there is a hole. There's a hole right there. I don't know if you can see it. See it? There you go. There's a hole right there by the pocket. Just now noticed it. Paid seven dollars for this shirt. Seven bucks. Yeah, I was gonna try to sell this uh, shirt for anywhere between fifty-five to seventy-five dollars, but I don't know. I, I just don't feel comfortable selling a shirt like this with a hole in it. You know, something that's supposed to be really nice. So I may take a loss on this, or just see what happens at charging shipping and starting an auction at 99 cents and just seeing if I get my money back because 
with a hole in it, the auction, you know, the, the buyer will tell you what it's worth pretty much. Um, I just don't feel comfortable putting a price of like $75 on something with a hole right here. Like my fingers right to it. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. Like I just, I just, just freaking saw that when I picked it up. That's, that's too bad. All right, here we go again, guys. In my last thrift haul video, I had one of these. It was navy blue and it had a full zip on it. This one doesn't have a zip. It has drawstring, drawstring hoodie. Um, and it is a Russell athletic hoodie vintage russell athletic so here let me show you the tag vintage russell athletic see it says made in usa there that means it is from the 90s uh towards the late 90s early 2000s the tag started to say made in mexico so if you get one that says made in mexico and it looks like this it still is probably vintage but it's probably going to be early 2000s so but this one is going to be mid to early 90s and prices are pretty consistent with these uh, you're probably going to be able to get about 45 to 50 bucks for this so memorize that russell athletic tag if it's on sweatshirts hoodies um, t-shirts the russell athletic for some reason the vintage russell athletic uh, it's very sought after so that is something uh, to pay attention too. yeah so okay i'm showing this shirt for a couple reasons this is not going to be a big money shirt right this is a vintage t-shirt and it's probably going to sell between the 15 to 25 dollar range somewhere i'm, I'm not going to take anything less than 15 for it and the reason i'm showing it is because it says charlottesville dogwood festival like i'm pretty sure everybody or mo I, I bet nine out of ten of you would flip right through this at the thrift store or not think anything of it especially especially since it doesn't have a tag the tag has been ripped out but if you look here look at the stitching on the sleeve you can see the single stitch that goes across the sleeve and across the bottom hem of the shirt that means it was made in 1995 or earlier the only bad part is i don't know what year this was made so I have a feeling this is probably gonna be late 80s just from the feeling of the fabric i think it's gonna be late 80s but i'm not gonna be able to say hey vintage 80s or vintage 90s or anything so i'm just gonna label it vintage and then name the shirt but these are the type of shirts i like to have this is the type of shirt i like to have in my store for when that one person searches for their city or their town and then they find this and they buy it. i had one in my last sales update where a guy bought a t-shirt from Havana, Havana, Illinois. So hopefully that happens with this one as well. We'll probably start it at around $25 and go from there and see what happens. So know your vintage t-shirts. All right. I like this one. This one, we get out in front here. It says MSU Tigers. It's kind of the lights kind of washing it out there, but it's Navy. It's like a Navy blue. It says MSU Tigers. That is Memphis State Tigers. I live in Memphis. And in 1994, uh, Memphis State changed its name to the University of Memphis. So anytime you see anything with Memphis State, MSU, on it, you're, it's going to be from 1994 or earlier. This is very clearly from the 80s. It is an acrylic cardigan sweater in perfect condition. There's no holes or anything like that. So I'm very excited about this one. And I couldn't find anything on eBay uh, like this one. But if you just search Memphis, Vintage Memphis State, uh, you will see that people love their Memphis State attire and they love to buy it and, and keep that name alive. So, And it's embroidered. It's a patch. It's very well made. So I'm excited about this one. We're going to start this one at $75 and see what happens. I'm hoping I can at least get $50 for it. But we're going to start it at about $75. Okay, guys, might as well stick with Memphis State. So that's cool. So know your areas, right? If you got colleges and stuff like that around, know your areas and, uh, you know, be on the lookout for that stuff. But this says MSU Tigers. It is a, I got like a polo rugby style. But you know what? It feels kind of like a sweatshirt. Yeah. It kind of feels like a sweat, like a light sweatshirt. It doesn't feel like a, your regular uh, cotton on a polo shirt. Um, 
I already have this one listed. I have it listed for $55 and I'm hoping we can get that for it. But yeah, so two Memphis State items this week. I'm excited about that. They always sell very well. Never been able to keep anything that says Memphis State on it. So another good find. All right, here's one I might have missed on, but I might not have. And I'll explain. So this is a, a vintage year 2000. It's a Harry Potter Gryffindor. I, I guess this is supposed to be, I don't know. It's like a jersey and it says Potter on the back. Maybe this is like a Quidditch jersey. If you know Harry Potter, the sport they played Quidditch. I'll have to look up to see if it's an actual like Quidditch jersey or Quidditch jersey or whatnot. Um, but it's long sleeve. It's uh, on the inside of the tag here. I'll show you the tag. There's the tag, and if you look underneath, it has a copyright date of the year 2000. So Warner Brothers 2000. So uh, vintage Harry Potter. And when I looked this up on eBay, I was a little disappointed because uh, somebody had ran an auction for one, and it only sold for $15. So that was like one bid, one bid for $15. And then there's another one. There's another one on sale. Somebody's trying to sell it for $65. So I don't know, guys. What is it worth? It's the only two I can find. So we're going to, I'll do some more research and I don't know what to list it as. I don't know what price to list it as, but uh, you know, I'm going to start it high. You know, I'm going to start it high. So uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll put a best offer on it and see if I get any offers, uh, something like that. But hopefully you'll see this one. Uh, in a sales update real soon for a nice profit and one of my favorite shirts to show you guys and i try to pin this you know get this engraved into your head especially for you uh you new thrifters and new resellers this is a life is good t-shirt and it says grateful dad now i want to say this is a take on the grateful dead but it doesn't have anything that indicates that it is but it just says grateful dad and there's and they spell grateful like grateful dead does so i don't know i wish there was like a dancing bear or something like that on there but anyway there are a few of them on ebay uh only a couple that are long sleeve and it looks like we may be able to sell this for about 20 to 25 bucks now why do i show life is good oh by the way let me show you the inside tag um there you go life is good why do i show these not because they're big money makers just because they're very consistent if you need a consistent item in your store that moves always, then life is good as one of them. I've never not been able to sell a life is good shirt. Everyone I've ever listed sells usually quickly, uh, but eventually they all sell. So that's why I'm showing this life is good. And I like this one because it says grateful dad. So <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully we can get about uh, 20 to $25 for this one. All right, guys, now the most profitable item of the week. And this, I got it when I stopped by that yard sale for like two seconds. Uh, today, actually. And he had this Carhartt jacket. There we go. There you go. Carhartt jacket. It is uh, got the corduroy collar. And it's quilted on the inside. I'm not going to unzip it, but you have to trust me. It's quilted. It's black. I don't know like what color it looks like it is but it is black it's called like an arctic black i looked it up um also found something else out about carhartt i'm gonna try to show you i'm not gonna be able to show you hold on let me let me just let me, let me look it up hold on all right guys here we go i just i i wasn't gonna be able to show you i wasn't gonna be able to show you the the tag because it's kind of beat up and everything but th this is what i'm gonna show you this is what i learned today about carhartt so i didn't know I didn't know how old this jacket was. I didn't know how to tell how old this jacket was. I didn't know if it was vintage or, or anything about it. So here, I'll just bring up this one. This is one exactly like mine, the one that I have here, except it has um, it has this Matson on it, right? Okay, so we're gonna forget about that. It has Matson. All right, so it's not uh, exactly like mine. This one's actually a little newer, but this one, you know, they they had it on sale for $132.95 and they took a best offer for it. So we're gonna look at the tag here. So this tag is actually right under uh, the Carhartt tag on mine. Uh, on this jacket, it's on the inside towards the bottom. But anyway, right there where it says RN number 14806, you see right under that where it says 1015. Uh, the 10 stands for October, and the 15 stands for the year 
2015. So that's how you can tell how old these Carhartt jackets are. And uh, mine is a, is a 0510, so May of 2010. So it's not vintage, right? Which is fine. But then I looked up the, um, the model of the jacket. So on my tag, they cut it off on this one. So wait, no, they didn't. Here we go. There it is. That's just like mine, uh, my tag as well. Uh, so you see where it says C55BLK. That's how I searched for this jacket and it brought up this exact jacket, but uh, in several different era, like not eras, but several different years. I've seen some from 08, from 2010, from 2015. But yeah, so that's how I was able to find out that this is a Yukon Extremes Arctic quilt line jacket. And then I did look that up on Google and it checked out. So that's how we'll list this. But like you see, this one sold, uh, I don't know what the best offer was, but $132.95. And the uh, buyer paid $17.10 shipping. And if we go back a little bit, there's another one. Yeah, right here. This is uh, pretty much exactly like mine as well. This one, this one's more like mine. And this one was from 09. So October of 09. So a year older than the one that I have. But it is... Pretty much the same jacket. This one sold for $100. Uh, buyer paid $20 shipping. So I paid $5 for this jacket at a garage sale. I, I, I knew it was going to be worth something. I didn't know it was going to be worth over $100. Uh, but I knew it was going to be worth something. And uh, poor guy, I didn't have the heart to, to tell him. So I took his jacket for $5. And I feel bad sometimes. All right, so that's it, guys. This video may be a little bit longer because I, I talked a lot in the beginning. But... You know, I wanted to tell my story about, you know, reselling all week and then show you some of the things that I bought, but I'm going to try to cut it down as much as I can. So, uh, how did I feel being a full-time reseller? I, I do not envy you guys at all. So it would really take a big adjustment and, uh, I would have to learn how to get ahead of the crowd, so to speak, or, you know, fight for certain things. Not, you know, not in a literal terms of fighting, but, you know, you know, you, you got to fight and be, ag be aggressive getting there early, uh, before everybody else does and, and stuff like that. And here's the big question. Did, did I come out any better or worse than I do part-time reselling? I don't think I, I found anything other than the Carhartt jacket. I would have never been able to go to a yard sale on a Thursday because I work full-time other than the Carhartt, Carhartt jacket. Um, I don't think I found anything that I couldn't already find part-time. So tell me, if you're a full-time reseller, what what would separate me from getting a different experience working full-time as opposed to part-time? I'm just curious. I'm just curious. You know, uh, is it the estate sales get more aggressive with the estate sales or, or what? Getting to the thrift stores first, you know, before everybody else? I don't know. I don't know. Well, guys, that's my experience. I hope you hung through the entire video. Thank you so much. If you're a new viewer, please subscribe, like the video, come back for more. And uh, I'd love to hear some comments on uh, just what you think about, you know, part-time reselling to opposed to full-time reselling. I'm not going to go full-time reselling. I have a great job. So I probably would never do that unless I get fired or something and forced to do it. But anyway, just tell me your opinions on it and um, tell me, tell me what separates you uh, as a, as a full-time reseller. Like what can you do that as part-timers can't? I'd love to hear that. All right, guys, comment, like, subscribe, go follow the socials. Links down in the description. See you in the next video. Take care.